You can skip this video if you trust that I know my Islam and you just want to know what it talks about already. However, it does help to know what Islamic scripture actually looks like and it will keep you from potentially being confused later. And of course, if you look into them, you can honestly say that you've done your background research and know what you're talking about. So what do the Islamic scriptures actually look like? Well, first of all, the Quran is not like the Bible. With the Bible, you are told a story in the order that it happened with a consistent message despite a vast range of human authors. Everything is together in one book and the Bible explains itself. Not so in Islam. Muslims say that the Quran is the literal word of their God Allah spoken in first person directly to Muhammad, the only prophet. Everything said, therefore, assumes Muhammad as the audience. The reader is expected to know about the customs and particular situations that happened 1400 years ago without the full context. Now, because we aren't Muhammad, reading this is a real pain in the butt. For instance, Quran 56 verse 8 says, Those of the right hand, how happy will be those of the right hand, and those of the left hand, how unhappy those of the left hand. In the entire Quran, we never find out whose hands these are, only that the righties will get to frolic with virgins in Islamic paradise, while the lefties are to burn and eat thorns in Islamic hell. Why hands? Are they even literal hands? And why are people companions to a hand? As if this weren't confusing enough, the Quran isn't written in chronological order. Instead, it's ordered from longest chapters to shortest. Actually, calling them chapters is too kind. They're more like a collection of rants. No, seriously, that would be the best way to label them. Allah will talk about one subject, and then suddenly jerk to another subject without a hint of transition. And then there's missing words, incorrect grammar, which isn't the fault of the translators, and repetitions of the same subjects over and over to the point that it's tedious. There is no regard for the standards of quality we are used to seeing in our books. The Quran is simply a jumbled mess. Imagine trying to read Goldilocks and the Three Bears with Goldilocks pretending to be Allah. You might start the story with Goldilocks thinking, third time's the charm, and taking a few paragraphs to express that three is her lucky number. You don't know why she's saying this, or who she even is, and you don't find out for a dozen or so pages. Then Goldilocks rants about a chair that was too hard, then she's eating cold porridge, then she wakes up to find herself surrounded by bears, then she's thinking about how hard that chair was again. As the book goes on, we eventually find out that the bears were once in the house, which could mean that it belongs to the bears, or it's Goldilocks' house and bears broke in, or it's really a cave. We can't be sure because the fairy tale just assumes we know, and there are words missing. Then more ranting about the hard chair. By the end of the story, all we really know is that Goldilocks is fortunate the third time she tries something, she encountered bears at one point, and man that chair was hard. Oh, and Goldilocks might actually be two people, because half the time she refers to herself as we. That's what the Quran sounds like. To prove it, I'm going to take a random extract from the 11th chapter, or Surah, titled Hud, verses 96 through 122. I invite you to read the whole thing on, on Quran.com at some point. Fair warning, this is mind-numbing. We sent Moses with our signs and a profound authority to Pharaoh and his elders, but they followed the commands of Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's command was not wise. He will lead his people on the day of resurrection all the way to hell. What a miserable abode to live in. They have incurred condemnation in this life, as well as the, on the day of resurrection. What a miserable path to follow. This is news from the past communities that we narrate to you. Some are still standing and some have vanished. We never wronged them, they wronged their own souls. Their gods whom they invoked besides Allah could not help them in the least when the judgment of your Lord came. In fact, they only ensured their doom. Such was the retribution enforced by your Lord when the communities transgressed. Indeed, his retribution is painful, devastating. This should be a lesson for those who fear the retribution of the hereafter. That is the day when all people will be summoned, a day to be witnessed. We have appointed a specific time for it to take place. The day it comes to pass, no soul will utter a single word except in accordance with his will. Some will be miserable and some will be happy. As for the miserable ones, they will be in hell where they will sigh and wail. Eternally they abide therein, for as long as the heavens and the earth endure, in accordance with the will of your Lord. Your Lord is doer of whatever he wills. As for the fortunate ones, they will be in paradise. Eternally they will abide therein, for as long as the heavens and earth endure, in accordance to 
to the will of your Lord, an everlasting reward. Do not have any doubt regarding what these people worship. They worship exactly as they found their parents worshiping. We will requite their due share fully, without reduction. We have given Moses the scripture, but it was disputed, and if it were not for a predetermined word decreed by your Lord, they would have been judged immediately. They are full of doubts about this, suspicious. Your Lord will surely recompense everyone for their works. He is fully cognizant of everything they do. Therefore, continue on the path you have been enjoined to follow, together with those who repented with you, and do not transgress. He is seer of everything you do. Do not lean towards those who have transgressed, lest you incur hell and find no allies to help you against Allah, then end up losers. You shall observe the contact prayers, Salat, at both ends of the day and during the night. The righteous works wipe out the evil ones. This is a reminder for those who would take heed. You shall steadfastly persevere, for Allah never fails to recompense the righteous. If only some of those amongst the previous generations possessed enough intelligence to forbid evil, only a few of them deserve to be saved by us. As for the transgressors, they were preoccupied with their material luxuries. They were guilty. Your Lord never annihilates any community unjustly, while its people are righteous. Had your Lord willed, all the people would have been one congregation of believers, but they will always dispute the truth. Only those blessed with mercy from your Lord will not dispute truth. This is why he created them. The judgment of your Lord has already been issued. I will fill hell with jinns and humans all together. We narrate you enough history of the messengers to strengthen your heart. The truth has come to you herein, as well as the enlightenments and reminders for the believers. Say to those who disbelieve, do whatever you can, and so will we. Then wait, we too will wait. The Sermon on the Mount, this is not. Really, what's a fair analysis of this scripture? For the most part, it's extremely vague. All we can really pull together is this. Allah insists he's real, and everyone who doubts is worthy of hell. The righteous won't go, though, whatever it means to be righteous in Islam. Since the term is subjective, the layman reader may think Islam might be pious, but let's just say that it's impossible to be considered righteous if you're not a Muslim. So saith the tolerant religion. I know it's taking a while to get into the subject of what the Quran actually says, but I must emphasize how difficult it is to read. Allah is supremely incompetent for making his supposed final revelation to mankind so sloppy. That's why there are other Islamic scriptures Muslims depend upon called history collections. They are sort of like the Gospels in the Bible since they tell the story of Muhammad's life, but again there's a big difference. See, the Gospels are dependable. They were finished within the lifetime of the Apostles who saw Jesus with their own eyes. In Islam, by contrast, the earliest history of Muhammad was written more than 200 years later by a Muslim biographer named Ibn Ishaq. And all he had to go off was stories about Muhammad passed down word of mouth from the survivors of Jihad. Muslims, therefore, don't actually have any reliable information about Muhammad as a person, but the Quran commands that they act like Muhammad. The histories also elaborate on a lot of things that the Quran fails to give in context. Therefore, Muslims must make do with what they have. I don't need to say a whole lot more about the histories, since unlike the Quran, their writing quality is about what we're used to. However, it is important to note that the Muslims hold some histories in a higher esteem than others. Ishaq and Tabari are the first historians, and therefore closest to the truth of what the real Muhammad must have been like. But because their books depict Muhammad as a warlord, and are so damning to the religion of Peacemith, many Islamic teachers today declare them dubious and unreliable. Never mind that they are perfectly compatible with the Quran and in perfect sync with all the terrorism we witness on a daily basis. Ishaq and Tabari were Muslims who spoke favorably of Muhammad, yet of all the ways they could have depicted him, they proudly characterized him as a terrorist. While rational people consider these two pieces of literature to be strong evidence that Islam is a terrorist manifesto, Muslims typically avoid them. Now, if you want historians that Muslims won't brush off, try Sahih Bukhari and his disciple, Imam Muslim. Bukhari is rated second only to the Quran and great for using if a Muslim ever accuses you of taking the Quran verses out of context. There are other historians, but Ishaq, Tabari, Bukhari, and Imam Muslim are your best bets. You can look up what they have to say on prophetofdoom.net or listen to their stuff on the next video, Actual Teachings.